So we're here to solve this challenging star battle puzzle. It was a concept I had to really force uh, some look ahead kinds of steps and hopefully uh, you can see the almost symmetric pattern in the center with these key shaped galaxies. This galaxy has a cutout and this, this uh, galaxy is turned out, but in principle you have this shape and one of the things to notice about the shape is that the ends of the keys that point into the next key have a kind of deduction, which is that if you actually placed a star in one of these, and you know this, this works wherever in the grid you do it, but I'll just start up here. If you place a star here, it eliminates enough cells in the next region that you leave behind just an L tetromino, which will pack quickly. That leads to another one that packs quickly, leads to another one that packs quickly. And you get this kind of filling in of the grid. And there's not so much, you can see that right now this isn't eliminating parts of the pattern, but the sense that they're chain deductions uh, was one part of how uh, I designed this grid. You can actually start from exactly this cell and see it. If you put a star here, it forces a star there, it goes all the way around. There's a way at the star of this puzzle to say something like, this cell is unusable because of the influence around all of these galaxies that would force a really big chain like that. And that's, that's not the intended break-in, but this kind of observation of how these galaxies work together is one thing to have in your mind as you work through a different hard step that is pretty typical in star battles, which is where are there sets of galaxies that uh, are pretty limited in rows or columns? And the set to think about um, comes in by seeing this, this galaxy Essentially, let's look in the first few columns. This galaxy 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. These sets here are all in the uh, first five columns except for this single cell. So every part of these galaxies is in the first five columns. This is the only outlier. And this cell, uh, if it's used, allows finally a cell to be potentially in this shape or up in this shape or somewhere else coming over to the left. And this is the second observation that's key, is that if you start to put in uh, stars in any of these regions to fill spaces into these five columns to the left, you've got to leave at least this one point out. And so the actual break-in I had in mind for the puzzle was to show that a star here, which puts these stars into these spaces, is going to leave 11 stars in the first five columns. There's this star in this region, and there need to be two, four, six, eight, ten in those regions. And that's a total of 11 because we can't use the space. And so, again, this is working around the, the key shaped galaxy clusters in the middle. But the, the forced observation that a star here puts a star here and eliminates the cell, so you end up with too many, um, says this is not used. This now means that you can't use this cell because that would put one, two, three stars in the same column. That means you can't use this cell because it would put one, two, three stars in the same row. Um, that, that would now come back to this cell, which we, we did at the start, but imagine this hadn't been marked one, two, three in the same column. We get that there are two stars in these two by two blocks of this region. That uh, leaves behind a one by three um, where there's at least one star here. That's gonna cancel um, these spaces. There uh, is gonna be, um, uh, now that we uh, think about it, uh, having marked this cell off, there is one star here and one star here. And that's because again, across these five regions, there are 10 total stars and we need to have two stars in the fifth or further right columns to leave behind eight in the space. There'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stars in this case. And all other cells in the first four columns are now accounted for. Having those marked, we'll start to place some limitations in the adjoining spaces. Uh, this star here marks these off. This central galaxy that's in the middle of the key shapes now has some limitations. You can see that a star in the cell or the cell would remove four of the remaining six and not leave a space for another star. So that gives us uh, this kind of logic. We now have a situation where a star has to be in this one by three shape. 
which limits around that galaxy. A star has to be in this one by three shape, which limits in these spaces. There's one last tricky deduction, and I think the rest of the puzzle just flows. And this is, again, a look ahead type deduction, where a star in one spot limits these stars in adjoining regions quite quickly. Um, the space to look at is right here, and also about this third row. We know that there's a star in this row. And see that if we took a, a cell like this cell, it eliminates all but these four uh, parts of a tetromino shape. And a star here forces a star here and here. And these two collectively don't work with a third star in the same row. And um, so the last uh, critical cell to eliminate before the whole center unravels is that this cell is not part of a star that just one of these two is. And the immediate consequence of marking off the cell is that the center region is going to have stars in uh, one of these two cells, one of these two cells. Marking off this cell now says that a star here is in one of these cells and in one of these cells. This marking eliminates a lot of options, which actually forces a star straight away down to this one cell and also forces this star straight away up. That up eliminates options for these two clues, so those go in straight away. These two finish this column, so a star goes here and also gets moved over to here. And I'm gonna take some time to catch up with the shading. But in these cases, either the stars are placed in the rows or spaces, so these aren't allowed right around the star for no touching. This region now has two cells left to it. I'll quickly mark those in. Got this column completed so I can mark off the space. Let's mark around the star. This region now has these cells left. And again, it can only put one more in this column. So star is here, a star is here. The star moves over to the left. All very quickly forced just by the geometry. The star has to come up because the rows are already finished. Actually, the fourth through sixth rows are complete. Um, There's some more to do on the left, but this is where in the, the setting of the puzzle, I hadn't actually specified any of these rightmost regions yet. You very much put the left in first to force the start. But look at this snake-shaped region. It was pretty large at the start, looked to have no information. It actually has all of its cells, except for two of them, marked as impossible because the, the columns or the rows or the cells just being right next to stars have been completed. And so um, maybe a, a subtle observation, but the key observation of this moment in the puzzle is that those are the uh, two locations we must fill in. Putting in the star is probably the more critical one because it starts to limit this upper leftmost region which now has one more star that can go in this row, but and a star that absolutely must be in the top row to leave behind the right number of stars in these spaces. We now have put one star in this column, so the other star is going to be somewhere down here, but that leaves behind a star that's going to be in this space. And note for this region, there are three cells left, and taking the center cell is actually going to eliminate all of those cells. So the star and the remaining star in this region that's not in the first column is in the second column in one of these two cells. These two stars now account for all in that column. So you can mark this in. That actually finishes this row. Coming back to how this shape had just enough space to take a star, you'll see now in the setting of the puzzle that this region it has a star left to place in the top row, so that's where one goes, and then it's got one other cell left over to potentially use. And so marking in this star is another step we've got to take right now in the puzzle. Let's actually do a little more housekeeping. This column is finished, and this column is finished. These columns, actually, I should say, are finished. This region now has two cells and one cell that are going to take the remaining stars. These finish out all but this cell in the first column, which moves this down. Um, two are in this row, so the last star has to be down here. Got one more in this row. That fills up to here. 
this is the last star in this row, column, and region. And based on eliminations, this is the last star in the puzzle. It goes right there. So a very tricky beginning, an actual like really quick cascade down to the solution once it gets going by working through the center section. It was a look ahead concept puzzle that these region shapes uh, would force uh, quick placements of lots of stars. I guess we talked about starting here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or things you could keep in your mind. But that look ahead connects with the fact the left side was quite constrained to limit these shapes and work through the center, eventually work out through the grid a little bit at the top to see once uh, A star was in the space that you couldn't take both of these cells. But so hopefully some different kinds of strategies for you to think about, particularly the intersection of compact regions and, uh, I guess, cascades of quick logic when certain things are placed. Again, a, a concept puzzle that uh, you may or may not have enjoyed, but was certainly a, a fitting and challenging end for the week. So I hope you enjoyed the star battle, and I'll see you again soon.